In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to take a look at equilibrium of coplanar force systems, wherein we will learn the concept of equilibrium, the conditions of equilibrium, and then we will also solve some basic problems on equilibrium. Let us first take a look at equilibrium. Consider a building. The number of forces are acting on it, like the wind forces, self weights, weight of occupants, etc. Because of all these forces, a resultant will definitely act on the building. Therefore, by Newton's second law of motion, the whole building must move in the direction of the resultant. But the building is still stationary. It doesn't move. This is because the building is designed in such a way that the resultant force acting on it is zero. Hence, the building doesn't move. This state of the building under a zero resultant force is known as the equilibrium of forces. For a coplanar force system to be in equilibrium, the resultant of the force system should be zero. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. We will now learn about the conditions of equilibrium. With the help of Newton's first law of motion, we can define a body to be in equilibrium if it is in a state of rest or uniform motion. For a body to be in equilibrium, the resultant of the system should be zero. This suggests that the sum of all forces should be zero and the sum of all moments should also be zero. For a coplanar force system, the equations of equilibrium will be as follows. Sum of all forces in x direction is zero. Sum of all forces in y direction is zero. Sum of moments of all forces is zero. With the help of free body diagrams and on applying the above conditions, we will be able to analyze a coplanar force system in equilibrium. The following problems will be helpful to understand the concept behind equilibrium of a coplanar force system. The way we draw the free body diagrams show the reactions offered by the supports and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns. Consider the following problem. A beam AB is hinged at end A and roller supported at end B. It is acted upon by loads as shown. Find the support reactions. We will first draw FBD of the beam AB. Reactions at the supports are accordingly assumed. Hinge at A gives a reaction having components HA and VA. Roller at B gives vertical reactions RB. The uniformly distributed load has been converted into a point load of 10 kN acting at the center of the UDL. The 30 kN force has been resolved into components. Now we will apply the conditions of equilibrium to the beam AB. We will first find the summation of the moments of all forces about point A and then equate it to zero. Kindly note that moments are first calculated about a point having maximum number of unknown forces passing through that point. In this case, it is the point A. On simplifying, we find the support reaction at point B. Then, we will find the summations of all forces along the x and y directions and equate it to zero. In the process, we will find the horizontal and vertical component of the support reaction at A. Hence, we have found vertical reaction at B to be 35 kilonewtons, horizontal reaction at A to be 25.98 kilonewtons, and the vertical reaction at A to be 25 kilonewtons. Consider the following problem. Find support reaction for a bracket AB fixed to the wall A. The system consists of a bracket externally supported by a fixed support at A. Now, let's draw the FBD of the beam. We will now apply the conditions of equilibrium to bracket AB. We will first find the summation of moments of all the forces about point A and equate it to zero. Thus, we find MA is equal to 
15.26 kilonewton meters in an anti-clockwise sense. Then we will find the summation of all the forces about the x and y directions respectively and equate them to zero. In the process we will find the horizontal and vertical component of the support reaction at A. Hence we have found horizontal reaction at A to be 4.36 kN, vertical reaction at A to be 12.05 kN and the moment acting at A to be equal to 15.26 kN in an anti-clockwise sense. Consider the following problem. A wheel of radius 50 mm and weight 100 newtons needs to be pulled over a 20 mm high edge by applying a force F on a rope attached at the center of the wheel. Find the minimum force required to do so and the corresponding angle alpha. The FBD of the wheel is shown alongside. The wheel gets a reaction RM from smooth surface at M and reaction Rn from edge at N. For the condition that the wheel needs to be pulled over the obstruction, it would require loose contact at M and hence reaction at M is equal to zero. We will now apply conditions of equilibrium to the wheel. We will first equate summation of all forces along the x direction to zero. Using the basic geometry, we will find the inclination that the reaction Rn makes with the x-axis. Thus, we will represent reaction at n in terms of f cos alpha. Then, we will equate summation of all forces about the y direction to zero and obtain an equation representing f in terms of Rn and sine alpha. On substituting and then simplifying, we find an equation representing f in terms of alpha. We know that for a minimum value of force F, we will have to find the derivative of F with respect to alpha and equate it to zero. On simplifying, we find alpha is equal to 53.13 degrees. On substituting this value in the above found equation 3, we find force is equal to 80 newtons. Therefore, the minimum force required is 80 newtons acting at an angle alpha equal to 53.13 degrees. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. The state of a body under a zero resultant force is known as the equilibrium of forces. For a coplanar force system to be in equilibrium, the resultant of the force system should be zero. We then learned the condition of equilibrium of a coplanar force system. Sum of all forces in x direction is zero. Sum of all forces in y direction is zero. Sum of moments of all forces is zero. With the help of free body diagrams and on applying the above conditions, we will be able to analyze a coplanar force system in equilibrium. We then solved a few problems which were helpful to understand the concept behind equilibrium of a coplanar force system. The way we draw the free body diagrams show the reactions offered by the supports and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns.